Hello, everyone. Um, we are going to kick back off. Apologies. I know there's, there's lots to chat about today, but uh, we do have a lunch break, so you will get plenty of time to talk about all the amazing stuff that you've seen so far. Um, I'm back again. I'm Steve from MediaTel, and I'm delighted to be joined on stage by Harry Twillier. Have I got that right? Absolutely. Fantastic. I do normally butcher people's names, so I'm pleased I've got that one right. We're here for Rejected on Dragon's Den, now stocked in 10,000 stores. So that is uh, quite a lot for us to get through and talk about, um, the background of that story. But first of all, uh, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about Oppo Brothers, a little bit about yourself, and, and also where did the story all begin? Yeah, sure, and I'm, I'm conscious that this is uh, just before the lunchtime uh, and uh, slot, and I'm talking about ice cream. Um, so apologies, I'm starting to hear any uh, churning stomachs. But um, uh, yes, uh, we are uh, ice cream that's famous for flavour, not calories. And uh, the idea started, I mean, it's, it's amazing to sort of listen to some of the previous speakers and uh, hear all these acronyms that I've, I've never really heard of before. And we didn't really start with any real market uh, insights. Uh, we just created a product that we, that we wanted. Um, but it's, yeah, it's quite interesting to see how far uh, some passion can, can get you with, uh, with retailers and, and buyers. What, what, what um, made you want to create that product? So uh, we, uh, we did a, an expedition in Brazil um, just over 10 years ago now, um, where we tried to break a record for the longest distance travelled by kite power on land, if you can imagine that. Uh, we thought we'd go much further than we would each day, and there were a few times where there were lots of mangrove swamps, and so we were walking, and uh, we ran out of food for a couple of days, and did a bit of foraging, and ate some coconuts and other sort of, you know, berries and that, and that sort of thing, and, and just it just got us thinking about... Um, why does food have to always be either really healthy or, or, or really unhealthy? And, and, and why can't uh, things that taste great also not be bad for you? Uh, and, and at the same time, uh, this was with my, my brother and, and I realised that we could probably work together and we had complementary skills. So Charlie, uh, he was working at Diageo at the time. We got back home. He slept on my sofa for about nine months and uh, uh, worked on about a 1,000 recipes in the kitchen and... Uh, a few months later, we were uh, at Waitrose head office trying to uh, peddle this thing in a Tupperware box, and they were very kind and, and sort of, you know, helped us, well, sort of gave us some feedback, and then we went away and, and improved it and improved it. And I, I love how, that, uh, how a brand was created um, during that journey. I, 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 I'm sure not all uh, people that want to create brands have to go quite on that, that journey, but that, that's a great backstory to that. Um, so you, you end up in, in, in Waitrose... Uh, they buy into the product, I take it. What, what happens next? Yeah, so we thought we'd, um, they'd, they'd do a trial into about 10 stores, and um, they, they said that they'd list us in 117 stores. So we then had to work very quickly to find a factory and uh, a good brand. And uh, obviously, we'd been working on all these things at the same time, but it was much faster growth than we were expecting. And then, and then you know, as many people will know here, the journey really starts when you're on shelves, getting people buying it. That was the, uh, that was obviously tough because um, yeah, everyone's a sort of a marketer or, or, or working with marketing people. And when you've got a product that's fairly oxymoronic in terms of it's, it's really indulgent, it's ice cream, it's an, a, an emotional purchase, and at the same time we're saying that it's got less calories, it's got you know it's got less fat. And over the last ten years or so, we've really figured out how to marry these things together. How did you convince them to take your product? Because I, I presume you're probably selling products yourself at the time, but on a much smaller scale. Yeah. But, you know, how, how do you go into a store like that and, and make a case for them to, to put that on the shelves or in the freezer, hopefully? Um, so, I mean, speaking to the buyers, we, we hadn't sold a single tub um, before, before going into Waitrose. Because so, so you hadn't sold a single product? Not a product. single tub, yeah. A few friends had, okay. had tasted it and... There's an amazing case for innocent naivety here uh, and uh, sort of just figuring out things as you, as you go along. I mean, I, I've been in marketing for, for that's all I've done, uh, working with, uh, with Google and uh, in the automotive industry, not, not, not in food. Uh, and I think we, we just spoke to the buyer and, and said, look, I think there's an insight here. The frozen yogurt brands that you've got on the shelves, they don't taste that great. People are buying them. And now uh, we are, we, we've replaced all of those brands. And, uh, and, and it was just sort of getting one person to agree to it. And then after that, 
making sure the rate of sale was, was good. So, and, and, and the way to do that is, is, is get it into people's mouths and drive trial, really. So you go kite trekking in Brazil. Uh, you and your brother have a chat about the fact that this is a product that doesn't exist. You think maybe we'll come back and do it. You don't sell a single product, but you go into Waitrose and manage to convince someone to put it on the shelves. Mm -hmm. uh, any regrets at this point, thinking, oh, what have we taken on a bit too much, too much here? I mean, um, someone, someone very senior at a, uh, one of the largest ice cream brands said, look, we've spent 20 million quid trying to make a product that you're, that you're looking at now. And I wouldn't bother. And, and I'm sort of slightly rest, less risk averse than, than my brother. And whereas he's the sort of person that will go, if someone says no, I, you know, I'm going to do even more. So I was all up for, for you know, carrying on with my nice marketing job. But, um, but, but we, um, you know, we, we, we carried on and, and, and sort of, you know, just sort of push, push through, really. And obviously, I'm telling an abbreviated story. And there's lots and lots of different, uh, different routes to it. OK. So fast forward, then, I guess, um, you, you've, if you looked at how the, um, the brand can make an impact, there's a gap in the market uh, for, for the, the particular brand. Um, obviously, there's a, there's a demand from the consumer and the rising conscious over health. What's the strategy, then, after that? What's the brand strategy? Yeah, it's, it's really changed over the years. Um, it started off being fairly sort of superfood-based. Um, and we were using products like baobab, which in, in, improves texture without use, having to use so much fat, and that's an African superfood, and it's, you know, it's got loads of vitamin C in it. Lacuma, which is a Peruvian fruit, which actually tastes a lot of caramel, and we, we still use that in our salted caramel flavour. And, and we were using these sort of superfoods and talking about them as part of the brand, and then people weren't really responding to it because they thought, oh, I'm not sure about that in ice cream. Uh, and so we, we moved beyond that, and and then went into you know, what, what is ice cream, and, and, it's, and it's something that's a more, uh, it's pure indulgence, and that's all it is. And if you can have that that's sort of accidentally healthy, you know, we've, we've done that, that's not the main event. That's, that's how the, the brand strategy has changed. And, and, and in the midst of all this, a number of big players came in. The, the, the guy from that ice cream company I was telling you about, they had Oppo in their R&D department, and they came out with a competitive brand, and and paid their listing fees and gone on shelves next to us and, uh, and all the bus advertising and all the rest of it. But they had gr great big calories on the, on the front of the tub. And ultimately, that, that sort of switched people off because it's, it's not what people were looking for in, in ice cream. And it, and it took a few years, but, but they exited the market. And um, we're, we're certainly not, not the, the biggest, um, but we're growing the fastest. And it's, it's really just doubling down on that and maximizing flavor because our, our vision is that ice cream, you know, all indulgent ice cream, and, and sort of confectionery and food as a whole can become uh, less bad for you and healthier and better for the planet too. What, why the name? Uh, stands for opposites. So it was a name that we uh, plucked out. Um, it, it's sort <laughs> of health and indulgence are opposites. And then we thought, well, we'd probably quite like to sell this in lots of different countries. And, and what does it mean in other countries? And it didn't really mean an awful lot. And, a certain Chinese phone manufacturer uh, was, was, was called that too, um, okay. but uh, they don't seem to mind. We have a bit of banter with them on Twitter, so it's, we're, <laughs> we're all right. I don't think they're going into food. We're not going into phones. So, Brilliant. so um, where, where was the, then the transition then between you've got into Waitrose, you've had to really up the game in terms of uh, the, the output of, of the product, um, I presume then at that point you realise you need a bit more investment. Mm -hmm. um, was it straight into the den? Was it? Did, did you look around for investment yeah. before that? We, we, we were um, looking for investment. We were speaking to a, a venture capitalist and we didn't feel quite right about them. Um, the BBC had contacted us quite a few times um, and, and, and they, you know, it's not just us, they do it with a lot of different brands that are emerging because it makes good TV. And we'd rejected it because we, weren't, we just weren't looking for that. But then we realized that as the viewership figures at the time were around four or five million. So it's crazy to, to waste that market opportunity. So we accepted. We went, we went on the den. And um, they just saw it as too much of a risk. And they just thought, well, it tastes nice, but you're not going to be able to sell healthy ice cream. So we're, we're, we're all out. Um, who, who were the dragons then on that day? Peter, Deborah. Tuka Sullivan, who told us we looked like a couple of estate agents. Okay. <laughs> um, 
Uh, I can't, I've uh, lost the names of the others. Okay. They were all, they didn't give us too much of a grilling. I mean, they did, but, but it was okay. I mean, you said, you said for, you went on really as an opportunity for marketing. So yeah. uh, how disappointed were you when perhaps you didn't get the investment? Uh, it would have been nice to have got an offer. Um, but, I mean, very, I mean, it's a bit cynical, but I think you'll find a lot of brands just go on there to, for the exposure. Yeah. Um, because the amount that the Dragons demand in terms of equity is so big and compared to what you can get, you know, in the rest of the market. And there's the, that it, it, it was just, for us, it was good to go on. But around the same time, um, we, we, were, we were thinking about other methods of, of investment, like you were saying. And we actually got a, um, a delivery of our, our ice cream from the factory we were working with at the time to our flat in, um, in Clapham. We got way too much for the chest freezer there. We said to the cafe downstairs, do you want some for free? Let's hand it out to anyone that's bought coffee. Hands that out. One of the uh, ladies there said, my husband works. He's a fan of ice cream, and he also runs a, an equity crowdfunding campaign, um, a company. So um, that was how we did a, a crowdfunding campaign with Cedars, who uh, we, we broke a record for the fastest funded food and drink company. Um, so it was a few minutes to, to our target. Um, and that was just by, uh, I mean, it was fairly early days, and I'm sure lots more has, has happened since then. Um, but uh, that was great, because it meant that people that were starting to see Oppo in supermarkets, and by that time we were in Ocado as well, um, and, and trying to pitch to Sainsbury's and Tesco, and um, people that were seeing us could then, could then invest and have, have a bit of a say in what we were doing, which was, which was great. For a consumer brand, crowdfunding is very good. And, and did the exposure from being on the Dragons then then aid at all? Did, did it make any difference? I think it, it aided because more people found out about us and said, oh, I probably would have put 20 quid into that. So, um, yeah, they did. A thousand of them did. And, uh, it, yeah. and, 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 and through the crowdfunding, um, or, or through your investors, you have one, Andy Murray, yep. uh, who, who's an investor. Yep. Uh, how, how did that come about? He, was, um, he came in on the second round, so we actually did three rounds with Cedars, and uh, he, he came in on the second and, and invested in a few other companies as well. Um, I think he's a, well, he is an ice cream fan. Um, so. so next at Wimbledon this year, we're going to see strawberries and oppo ice cream then? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he, uh, he actually, um, uh, I, I don't know if I, he, he exited um, uh, for a, he did well out of it as well, uh, just like everyone else that in, in the crowdfunding round because um, someone in, um, uh, in Switzerland who bought a number of food and drink brands then, then sort of helped us to really reach the next level uh, and you know, sort of pay for some bigger productions mm. and a little bit more marketing, although we're still not doing real sort of brand awareness marketing yet. Um, but he, he bought everyone out. So we've got a much clearer cap table now. So I was going to say, like the, the things like the Dragons there and Andy Murray, they're nice names to throw about, particularly you know for an event like us we put there. But but really, what what were the things that made the the big difference in terms of taking you from where you were to, to where you are now? Um, and you're, I mean, you're stocked in eleven countries, over ten thousand stores, Tesco, Sainsbury's, Waitrose, part of the Sunday Times, Fast Track One Hundred, ones to watch, Guardian Startup of the Year. I mean. Uh, what, what was it that, that elevated you to that next level? So the, the, the crowdfunding helped, but I mean, it's, it's, it sounds like a cliche, but it is the people. Um, so uh, our, our, our dad helped us a lot, um, and um, he, was, he was on our board and, and gave us a lot of uh, sort of very negative um, feedback on, on things, which was very helpful. Um, and and we, we do have a good team now. We've got five heads of in the business who have, been in their respective areas, whether that's marketing or operations or finance for, for longer than us, uh, and we work very well with them, and, and they help us to avoid some of the errors that we were making in the first couple of years, and um, it's more of a coaching relationship rather than a uh, sort of management one. So it's, it's, it's always the people that you can work with, and a bit of bloody-mindedness as well. Uh, it, it's quite interesting as well. You, you from, from an entrepreneurial standpoint, we had a piece recently in the Media Leader with, with um, Chris Kenner, who was the founder of an agency called Brand Advance, and mm -hmm. he said he had to step back and let someone else run the business for it to grow. How difficult is it then, as you know, you've created this, there's a lot of passion, I presume, behind that, you're mm -hmm. very close to it. How difficult is it to take on that advice 
be that negative, uh, you know, uh, feedback and things like that. Is is that something you've learned as a as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, that you, you have to embrace? Yes, absolutely, and it's it's really it's a really difficult one because you're in a one to one with someone. We do we do one to ones every week with with everyone, and that's our central thing. Uh, and it's really hard. So either you switch off and you just let them crack on. Uh, and I had a couple of kids at the same time you know, a few years ago when we brought these people on, and and it's very easy to do that. But then immediately something ca catches your eye, and you say, "No, that's crazy," and it's really disempowering and really annoying. And if anyone works with any any founders. Of, of, of businesses, it can be a real pain because they're really passionate and uh, they think that they're right and they're not always right. Um, sometimes they are because they've got uh, they've been doing it for a long time, but but they're often not, and it's and we've got to realise that. So uh, yeah, it's 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 letting the process happen and trusting people. And if you trust people, they will usually deliver. We grow into it. So I'm, I'm aware we're, we're near time, and I'd like to see if anyone's got any questions, so have a think about that. But just kind of, for me, it's like, first of all, you glad that you were rejected by the dragons? Absolutely. No, I would have liked to be at that too. <laughs> and then just said no. You should have said absolutely, just leave yeah. it there. Um, and, you know, a bit more perhaps about most recent investment, European expansion, like what, what's next? Basically, keep, keep creating um, ice cream that... Uh, that makes you feel good, basically. And so it's you know great, great taste, better for health and better for planet. We've just became a B Corp last week, which we're we're, we're proud about. Um, and uh, B Corp is great. It's almost the start of a journey uh, in, in in being more sustainable. Um, but it's a legal requirement. Our board and us, we have to act responsibly. And we were doing a lot of the things anyway. Um, but that's 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 a real central thing. So getting it in front of as many people as possible and trying to inspire the rest of the industry to uh, up their game as well in, in, in terms of uh, uh, sort of health and, and sustainability too. Have you seen any competitors uh, start stepping into that space then since you've been doing it? Five or six, yeah, yeah. And, and it's all good news. It all helps, it helps our, our sales, but obviously it makes those buyer conversations more difficult because we're competing for a tiny amount of space that someone opens the freezer for for sort of 30 seconds max, and then they close yeah. it again and choose something. So, yeah, okay. creates a good business then. Do we have any questions uh, from, for Harry? Everyone's yes. hungry. Uh, Omar Oaks, our editor of the Media Leader here down at the front. Hello, uh, thank you. Um, you said something very interesting at the start about uh, when you were explaining how the Oppo brand name came about. Um, do you think you should be? Do you think you should be lumped in with other HFSS brands in terms of the restrictions? Because you're, I guess, trying to offer something different, where it's a quote-unquote junk food brand, but a healthier version. Do you think that puts you in a different category? Yeah, HFSS, the high-fat, salt, sugar restrictions that, that Kellogg's were obviously getting upset with this morning, um, is is brilliant news for us, and we've been campaigning with it um, to because there was a, I don't know if. Any, where people are from in this room, but it's been kicked down the road um, many, many times. And, um, and, and we, you know, it's easy for us to say as a little agile startup, but it is possible. I mean, ice cream is, is probably, if you, if you want to not put on weight, it's probably the worst thing to eat. You know, combination of fat and sugar. Um, and it's fine in moderation, of course, like, like most things. But we wanted to create something that people could really uh, sort of eat, eat more of and enjoy more of. So... Um, we are, our products are um, HFSS compliant. They are not high in fat, salt and sugar. Um, and um, we really support it. If that, does that answer the question? And a proper journalist question there as well, other than someone in a bad jacket up on stage. Uh, one more, Brian uh, from Hi. Ozone. Um, I love the fact that you talk about the kind of naivety that you had throughout your journey. Um, but what's the things that have probably gone most to plan? So if you've thought, this is where we want to get to, what are the bits of your journey that have reflected that? Yeah, I mean, everything's um, happened so far. So we've, we've got into the UK big four. Um, we haven't um, grown in Germany, for example, as fast as we'd like, but, but we are in the major retailers there. Um, everything's just taken, you know, maybe f two or three times the amount. It's like building a house, two or three times the amount of time that you expect. Um, so, so what's gone to plan? Creating the, creating the product range, working with, with good factories, Getting, getting the right people on board um, and, and getting lucky enough to get, get some funding too. 
That's flown by. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Uh, thank you ever so much, Harry. Um, please, one more, one more applause for Harry. Thank you very much.